Welcome to the podcast with Face, Pat, and Tiz. This is the reason why, is the reason why um, Lil Wayne should have kept that, uh, kept trying to get that uh, patent Bling, because mm-hmm. Marvel has a mutant named Bling. <laughs> Man, Bling has been one of the most overused shit in the hip hop lexicon. He would have made mad money. Exactly, because mm-hmm. Bling is There's hella songs that that use that shit. He could have got royalties off them shits probably. I'll talk about it on the good fuck later on, but she, she she's up for the X Men vote. <laughs> that random mutant named Bling, but yeah, anyway. <laughs> but he should have kept that pack. Every time I come around the city, I got a comic book, comic book Marvel, Marvel Universe question for you, Pat. Mm-hmm. Who gonna be the first two mutants to come into the MCU? Very same Wolverine and Professor X. <laughs> I'll but take it. Damn, who else? You said Wolverine. You got me. I'm my second favorite Marvel guy. And it's a possibility he might. They might be coming out in Doctor Strange. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh yeah, That's multiverse type shit. I can see Please that. tell me that the Hulk is gonna come back too, so that I can get the Hulk and Wolverine in some type of a buddy movie. Oh my god, that would make my. Oh yeah, that, that would, would be perfect. Yeah, yeah, that would be. That would pa- be perfect. Pause That's everything I else would. I say, but that that would make me fucking nut my metaphorical pants right there. <laughs> like that, nerd. That would do it. Yeah, man, nerd guys. I'm like nerd. shit, man. I would geek the fuck out. They're, my, they're like my two favorite superheroes, period. So like I would, yeah, I, I would I would be one of them. I probably would dress up and go to the theater and all that weirdo shit. I got another that question would be, for you, mm-hmm. I got another question for you after you finish. Well, I would say that would be dope because when Wolverine first came out, it was in Hulk 181 <laughs> yeah. or whatever. So if he was to come like, out officially with the costume and everything or whatever on a Hulk like movie or whatever that would be dope. <laughs> oh yeah, they gotta go classic dope. Wolverine uh costume. They gotta actually do it right. They can't fuck. Mm-hmm. There's so many random Wolverine costumes. But what were you about to ask, baby? Damn it. Adam Fuck. Okay. Damn damn it. You good? That's on me. Damn damn it. I'll remember in a few seconds. Marvel. Second Marvel question. Just... Move on. Shit, I don't. I, I don't, don't even remember. <laughs> if, if it come back, it come back. But don't. I remember one day. And I'll we, take we, it. When it come back, just just go ahead and just ask it. <laughs> well, I'll, <laughs> so I'll can... ask the next Marvel question real quick. Um, oh, I remember. Whatever no, happened to the whatever happened to the origin series? You know how they had Wolf, Wolverine Origins. <laughs> want to be other origins. I'm I'm gonna tell you what happened to uh the X like X Men Origins Wolverine. And they they were gonna go do all the origins and stuff mm-hmm. in the movies. Is mm-hmm. That what you talking about? Face. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, Wolverine X Men Origins is what happened to that because. Yes. Ain't, yeah. that, ain't that what we got the bad Deadpool? Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. what happened. So, yeah. As soon as they pulled yeah. out the stupid Deadpool, they did the opposite thing they should have did and, and shut Deadpool up. What if Ryan <laughs> Reynolds sabotaged that movie and played that shit fucked up just so he can get the Deadpool movie made and then like take the place of what would be like that badass anti-hero that everybody would want in the rated R movies and then he becomes that. Well, that's like, how they Because he always be the, acting like he don't fuck with Wolverine in the little intros and shit. So I'm like, hmm. 
What if that was Ryan Reynolds playing off from the get go? Go ahead and act, play a fucked up Deadpool for everybody. I hate this shit. They stopped making them, and then a few years later, they come Deadpool. Yeah. Hey, you know, Deadpool don't really like I watch it. Wolverine don't fuck Deadpool, but they have their alliances from time. Yo, 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 you know robot, saying, robot, so. robot, robot, yes. robot, 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 <laughs> robot, 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 you glitching. I'm robot? Uh-huh. Oh, shoot. Probably because of the gut. Do my mm-hmm. weekly Wi-Fi check. Do I still sound robot? Not in this session, but... A few seconds. Ago, Do I still you... sound robot? No, you sound uh, Jamaican or some shit. I don't know what the hell. <laughs> <is>. <laughs> Jamaica, Jamaica, Jamaica bot. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what that was. I'm like, you about to serve up some jerk chicken, though. <laughs> Jamaican bot. Rasta bot. <laughs> Rasta <you> bot. <laughs> there you go. Hell no. Hey. Oh, Lord. I just. I oh, like fuck. it. I like it, Rastabot. Rastabot. That sounds like some shit. That like some shit you hear on Futurama or something. Rastabot. <laughs> hey, it might have been on it, man. <laughs> I'm firing on it. I remember, yeah, that man. Evil, I remember that evil Santa Claus episode. That tripped me out. <laughs> that was my shit. That was the first they bad Santa. They went to war, nigga. As it was great. Uh, bow, 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 bow. Oh, what the fuck? What the fuck you just say? Bow, 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 bow. <laughs> Live from a studio audience. <laughs> It's Tuesday night. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Live from a podcast audience. It's the partner. What's up, don't geek me I'm, up. I'm all about this, this silly shit. I'm going to have fun. We all come out with our... Imagine, imagine us with a night show. We all come out with our random interests. <laughs> One night we come out like uh, WWE wrestlers and stuff. <laughs> this would be hilarious. Yeah. My, my, my shit tonight is... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 like a Dominican baby. <laughs> Linda. That would be amazing. Yeah, I think it's a... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting there going on the phone. We got it. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> <sighs> It's gonna be one of those. Okay. I'm gonna be good tonight. Be good tonight. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I love it. All right. Um. Well, enough with the bullshit. What's up, guys? 
<laughs> Welcome to the Partners, a show with three friends, separated by distance, but connected by brotherhood, having weekly conversations that you can join in on. As always, I'm one third of the Partners. It's your boy, Tiz, along with... Teleporting right on. It is the Padawan. And I'm along with... What's that, man? What's that? It's your boy, Face in the Place. Somewhere in the race. I don't have no idea, but we here. What's that, <laughs> fella? We up in the What's up, y'all? How y'all doing this week, man? What's good, guy? Episode, uh, what is this? Is that 12 one five? Stick. Damn, we old, y'all. Six. We getting AARP now, y'all. <laughs> 60. Yes, sir. <clears throat> What's good, man? How y'all doing this week, man? Yeah, what's shaking? What's popping? Hey. Uh, things good. Just starting the week, pretty much. Enjoying my Tuesday off. Just breathing. <laughs> <laughs> Just breathing. <laughs> Just. Well, I'm glad that you're still doing that this week. That is a blessing. I, I would like to see you continue to do that, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Look at me right now. <laughs> <laughs> breathing. Just breathing. Just <sighs> yeah, good free air. Gotta breathe it now before they charge it. Ah, you yeah. know. No live detected there, man. Uh, but yeah, man, uh everything going good this week. Glad to hear that. Is it any way you need support or anything like that? Or you know, what's good, man? Um, yeah, y'all. Uh my phone off. So if y'all want to support. <laughs> Support partner is one. That was a partner is one. Oh shit! I just had, I'm just acting a fool, y'all. I'm playing, man. Just thank y'all for being there while I'm doing my saying my random shit. <laughs> oh, we got you. You know we ain't gonna be there, bro. That just is what it is. Always. God, is that you? <laughs> <laughs> this is your conscience speaking. <laughs> Jesus, 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 Jesus. That is Jamie Foxx's best moment. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that's the body man. Yo, he buried that dude's career, man. Literally. That's literally. <laughs> Got that dude. I feel sorry. I'm out of here. <laughs> like like bad like really bad <laughs> good day sir <laughs> no comedy career after this yeah yeah that shit crazy um but yeah man. how you doing this week face i'm copacetic really can't complain um every day is a blessed day above ground i can say that so i'm always glad for that mentally um Pretty copacetic. Physically, well, good. Um, spiritually, good as well. So I could say um, for the first couple of days of the week, I'm pretty much okay. We'll see what the rest of the week has to bring, but I'm going to try to stay optimistic um, once again, the 11th day into the new year. So we're trying to stay good and positive, keep everything rolling. No negativity, no negativity. So I'm pretty much okay. How about yourself, brother man? Oh man, um overall good, man. Uh still fucking with this anxiety, shit getting used to not being on the meds, but like overall, man, like life is decent. Like, you know, every day is 90 miles an hour, but I'd say I'm managing well. I'm I'm getting to a good place with my strategies and like life is good, man. Like the boy doing good, the wife doing good, y'all doing good, family doing good. I, I ain't got nothing to explain about, man. Somebody got it worse than me out there. Here we go. Indeed, man. Indeed, man. But I'm glad everybody doing good this week, man. If y'all do need any support, man, please, please hit me up. Like, I'm in a good place to actually be there fully. So, you know, use me as a resource. Damn right, likewise. Say that again. I'm sorry. I said, damn right, likewise. You already. You already. But yeah, man, let's go ahead and get into the shits for the week, man. 
So we got them right there. So, so before we get into the, I guess the grain, as promised a couple of weeks ago, I'm gonna give everybody a good financial tip. Um, what I think is a good financial tip, in my opinion, and from just just common sense to do, man. Going forward, um, if we try to live better, just do bigger financial things with people. Um, so financial tip this week, get life insurance. I've spoken on it before, but I'm going to keep speaking on it. Get life insurance. Make sure your family does not have to pay for your, irres- your irresponsibility after you're gone. You don't want to have your family have to do GoFundMe's and stuff for your, for your funeral after you gone. They have to pay for something you could have prevented with a life insurance policy. I guarantee we all know in life is death. Prepare and get life insurance. You may not know the day and time you go, but if you have life insurance, it won't matter when you go because your people will be prepared and they can take care of your body and take care of you and whatever bills you may have because after you're gone, guess what? Your bills still come. And if you're married, they come out of your name and go into your spouse name. So don't do that to your people, man. Make sure your family can thrive past when you're gone by themselves and not have your debt plus they have to take care of. With a good life insurance policy, you can start well for your family if your family knows what to do with it. But that all comes down to financial education. And that's my financial tip for this week. All right, that checks out right there. The life insurance is definitely a plus. You gotta have that. Gotta have that. Definitely. Way. Your family will follow yeah. you. You die is having to bury your ass and don't have the money to do it. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I hate to see families on GoFundMe just because somebody ain't getting the policy filled out. Like, exactly. Yeah. It ain't I that difficult. I understand. I, I, I've been in those places too, but if you do have the money, you should have a policy on your ass. Yeah, if you got a, if you got a job and they got benefits, get that life insurance policy. If you don't have a job, you can get insurance policy through companies, and some policies are as low as twenty or thirty a month. So, and that covers a good amount of money as well. So, check out the life insurance coverages, man. Yeah, that checks out. Now, moving forward, let's get into this against the grain, man. As introduced last week, against the grains, where we all speak on something that's that's a unpopular, a popular opinion that we have now my first one this week is i personally don't see nothing about talking shit about black people or any other race um it's a big thing i've heard oh you're not supposed to down a black person or black people trying this out that's our people man i don't care who you is you fuck up i'm talking about you i'm gonna speak on that shit because if i fucked up you're gonna talk about me too they talked about jesus so i don't think anybody gonna talk about me because i ain't better than jesus so hey i don't care if you're black white orange red whatever color you is I'm going to talk shit about you if you fuck up. Rightfully so. Talk shit about me when I fuck up. But when you fuck up, please believe I'm going to talk about it. I don't want to hear no black people talking about, you shouldn't be down on this black man. Fuck, he fucked up. I'm going to talk about this shit. Now, if you just doing your thing and I'm talking negative about you, that's something different. That's hating. I ain't going to hate on nobody. But I'm going to talk shit about you if you're fucking up. Now, my second thing, I don't believe everything in the Bible. I know it's not a popular belief, but hey, that's just my opinion. I, I just don't believe everything in the Bible. That's just me, me personally. Now, anybody else want to take the turn? Uh, I'll definitely say on your thing about the Bible, though, real quick. I would also say you might not be in the unpopular opinion. I think these days a lot of even Christians like myself, like, pretty much realize that there's parts of the Bible that are like, third person accounts of history. So there may be some historicity to it, but it, it may not be all the way exact. You know what I mean? And then mm-hmm. there's part that's more like allegory or like metaphor type type thing where like it's not supposed to necessarily be taken literally literal before it's stories told to convey a certain message or convey a certain theme that they're trying to relate more than anything. So I think you might not, Necessary on that second one, you might not be in the unpopular realm, bro. You might be more popular than you know. I, I was going to say, um, my I feel the same way, and the main reason why I feel that way is because humans I don't trust humans. Um, humans lie. Um, let's see, um, uh, back then there was no TV for entertainment, 
There's no recorded cameras or anything to prove anything that anybody says is a lie or whatever. You could pretty much say anything and run with it back then or whatever. So, and I also know as a writer and a creator that when you're writing stuff, sometimes you like to exaggerate for the art of it. Yeah, mm -hmm. embellish a little bit. Just, just for the art of it to convey a message in general. So, yeah, that's that's my reasons for it. So I understand you. <laughs> I dig it. Um, if y'all like, because I feel like uh, in the docket I'm going next anyway. And since I'm talking, I was going to say mine uh, against my there grandpa against the grain. I. I really don't believe politicians should be in the office past at, at least past 60. Because if you. That's cause that's it's, like shit. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. now I'm really, now it's bad. We're basically enslaved by the Jovo. That who, whatever issues and problems that the economy and, and social life bring apart majority of Americans right now are our age in the, in the 30s or whatever that's actually doing stuff so whatever they really decide they don't really feel it because the benefits of you being a politician you don't have to worry about certain things like that you get free health care you get security <laughs> you get what I'm saying like you pretty much get your free transportation and everything so you really don't feel the issues of the average person or whatever so and then after 60 and you have a lifetime like 30 years a whole lifetime matter of fact you've been in office for as long as the age range of most americans right now 30 years and you still in there and you don't even know what's going on you're not really feeling anything Pretty yeah. much, and you're making decisions. How can you make accurate decisions for the people that live out there? Yeah, so I agree with that. Yeah. I the prime, I definitely feel that shit to be like between 25 to 45. Like I feel like when you look at even biologically, that's like the apex of when you're like your sharpest and like when you're able to most maximize your physical youth plus your mental experience from a certain amount of years being on the earth so like you can combine those two things kind of the best in that little mid range so i think that should be like where you get in do that little term and then you get the hell out yeah yeah that, life, that lifelong should be for the birds and the lead to that old boys club shit yeah might as well be a dictator that part cash growing shit so and my second one is, I, I think death is a bad thing. <laughs> that threw me off. I didn't expect that. But yeah, yeah, fuck you too. Did he say, did he say fuck Putin again? <laughs> yeah, he did. He, he did. I did. It. And I meant it. <laughs> <laughs> what? Hey, shit change. <laughs> but, um, yeah. See these hands. My next, I don't care. My next against the grade is I think Def has a bad promoter. Like, I put it this way. This, this way. I put it this way. We have, there's never been somebody that has experienced that and came back and said, this shit is horrible. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> like nobody has came back oh, to death and blood. And everybody that's pretty much long, died, you know, just to <laughs> stay. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, the only people that has written about that did death come back is living. Back, would you be standing there to hear it? You say what? If they did come back to say that, would you be there to stand in there to hear it? Like, I know me. No, they, but you know. You'll come back. I don't care what they got to say. I'm gone. All right, boom. Yeah, I got I'm some gone, questions. It, 
because the first words is it's horrible in death. Oh, wait, I'm gonna get away from you so I don't get dragged back. To you. <laughs> I, I, I got I got some trip shit for you real quick based on your idea, Pat. Based on your mm. against the grant. Now, what if ghosts are the people that decided, hell no, nah, I don't want to go. It's hard. No, and, try to get back. <laughs> you feel me? and try to get back, but they couldn't get back in their body because their body's already buried. That's why they got to roam around and they try to possess people so they can get different body because they is all fucked up now because it's been buried. I think that's the definition of a ghost, pretty much, in general. Oh, that's like, their, like uh, that's their negative. A review. wandering spirit. Them, them the one star reviews right there, Pat. There you go. Hmm? The ghost. Them the one star reviews right there that you're looking for. Them the ones that's like, <laughs> oh, this shit is horrible, dude. Don't go down there. Yeah, I'm telling you, man. <laughs> you see, you see, Earth ain't no better, but I'm trying to stay here, so you don't don't, don't waste your time. <laughs> Oh shit! <laughs> I'm just saying, man. Like, think about it, you know. Hey. Well, like, oh, I, the, uh... I had a beautiful ride on the river of six. Had a bad, it's a beautiful cruise ride. Niggas with hoodies, <laughs> just walking well, I... around with skull masks. I... All right, I mean, I'm gonna... um. <laughs> I don't believe that financial ambition is important at all. I don't really think that chasing money or looking to be rich is important in life. I honestly think that being content is all that matters in the end. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, my other one was, uh, I don't think sports or restrooms should be mixed gender of any kind. Unless yeah, you're talking about like a co-ed and a mural type league for like kickball or something like that. But like the sports that are already separated by male and female gender, I think they should I think they should stay that way. And I think that if any other genders want to do something, I think they should have their own classification as well. Yeah, because I can't see a, a, a heavyweight boxing match between a heavyweight woman and a heavyweight man that that ain't gonna fare up too good. That that ain't gonna fare up too good, man. Um, a transitioned a transitioned woman. Um, um no. Now, if y'all I end up, gonna having, I'm I'm gonna tell you what is gonna happen. They're gonna do some old UFC shit. It's gonna be a whole mixed gender league or something like in but separately. If you want to join this league. I am fine with that, but I don't think there should be any the mixes of it uh-huh. that you have to be that. I think it should be a choice based thing because I just recently saw uh, I was on YouTube and I saw this video of this like this male that had transitioned to female um, facing a, a, I guess biologically born female and the shit looked brutal. Mm-hmm. Like, like it's a brutal sport. Don't get me wrong. Combat mm-hmm. sport is what it is, but it looked brutal in a different way. And the shit fucked me up because when I first saw it, I was like, oh, that's an ugly woman. And then, and then found out, like, at the end of the video that it was one of them videos that's, like, from, like, talking about, like, that specific thing. So I, I was like, oh, so that's a man. Mm. That explains why this is so bad. Like it, it was like it I don't was mean to stern. laugh, but I mean to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> it was stirring to me though. Like I ain't even trying to be funny on no shit. Like it was really jarring to see. Like I had been theorizing that that would that would be what it would be, but you know you you don't want to, you don't want to see nobody beat down like that. Like it was ugly, bro. So like I, I'm that just kind of sealed it for me. Like. I, I think that certain things are the way they are for a certain reason. Now, do I think that they, those leagues should have the same opportunities if they're able to generate the same funds to get that same, like, traction like they should? Like, promoters or people on TV, they should get the same opportunities to get TV contracts and all that shit okay. to generate the same type of funds that these other leagues. Like, But I don't think that we should ever – yeah, it, 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 at least not now. Maybe in, you know, a thousand – 
you know, maybe in a million years when we didn't evolve a little bit and, and things are more on a level playing field, as, I guess, like naturally, biologically, but that shit was bad, man. That shit fucked me up. Mm. But yeah, I, I think those are two spaces that it's okay to just have everybody have their own space instead of necessarily trying to make it be. Like integration is good in certain spaces, but with that in those two arenas, I don't see. It. Okay, I'm gonna give the perfect example where it would go totally wrong. Okay, we have the NFL and we have the laundry, and not the laundry, but lingerie football league, right? Now, not trying to paint a visual here. Really not trying to paint a visual. <laughs> but, <laughs> but take Jerome Bettis in his heyday. Oh, he transitioned God, to a female. Dude. Put him in the lingerie mm. football league. Is that what you really want? Do you really want him injuring all the females on the league? Because his body type wouldn't change. He Play was to have he was to have that Jerome Bettis mass. Personal foul, being a man. <laughs> <laughs> I not mean to laugh, but I That's mean to wrong. laugh. That shit I, so, I, I can see the bus just bowling through. <laughs> Boom, 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 boom. Like he's two hundred and sixty pound, two hundred and eighty pound men. So like, <laughs> I'm just imagining like <laughs> exactly. So I mean, I mean, exactly. hey man, I, I can't do everything a woman can do, and a woman can't do everything I can do. Mm-mm. Well, we're, well, we're, well, we're, well, we're just man, when you eat them, we're very evil, well, but we're different. Yes, well. The- Feminists when you need them. <laughs> they losing their Oh, no, they be against that shit, though. Like, against, like, uh, women going in there against men getting beat up like that. Like, it, it's not feminine it, as much as it's, like... It's fair. It's like a new classification. I would call them, like, the... Mo- like, oh, I don't want to use that term. For some other mm-hmm. term. It's no women of a newer generation that have developed that mentality. Like, and it's a very stark thing of like, I can do, like that's more, that's, there are older people that are joining the fight, but it's really not a large population of people like you would think that's doing it. It's just the population that is fighting for it is vocal. So they're going to be louder than the people who are kind of just kind of indifferent or against, you know what I mean? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that that's, yeah, I, I don't think it's as big of a se- section of our population as we would probably think based on the amount of publicity. Caitlyn Jenner beat all y'all women for women of the year one year. But I ain't, heard. Heard, I ain't even heard Caitlyn uh, talking about like mixing the sports because even Caitlyn like was at one point a male athlete. So even, mm. well, I don't know what her pronoun is. Is she it? Him, well, Taylor, like she's a, it's a Jenna, it's a Jenna, yeah, agenda. Taylor, Taylor Jenna know that like being an athlete, Taylor know the difference. Like, I don't, that's why I think Taylor ain't come out like, oh yeah, they y'all need to let, let nah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, that's a lot of fluidity, man. A lot of fluidity going on. A lot of fluidity. Well, hmm. fluid, fluid, fluid. So, since we're already thinking, (laughs) (laughs) that that was a horrible segue. (laughs) Dang, (laughs) you should have just been like, All right, we're going to the next topic or something, but damn. Oh God. Oh God. No, we were not speaking of that. No, we were not. No fluidity in the, in the, in the, in the <laughs> no, not speaking of that. I promise y'all we were not. If you if you happen to end up catching this somehow, and this is where you happen to be walking in, like this is not what we were talking about. I promise you. Run it back a few, you'll hear it. Right. Yeah. Oh, shit. Look at, look at, oh. Oh, All right, now let's move on to the next segment. <laughs> <laughs> I'm down with that. Oh, oh, shit. Shit. 
<laughs> Man, here we are. It's something to think about. The new segment once again, where I come to you with something to think about. Now, first one: Is it true that women become mothers the day they have their children, but men don't become fathers until they accept the responsibility for their kids? Something to think about. I, I, I know that saying, but it depends on how you want to look at it. Metaphorically, yes. Scientifically, no. Exactly. Yeah. Something to think about. Next one. African American, Hispanic American, Jewish American, but then it's just white. Why is it not European American? You know, colors really don't identify any race because black people are all hues of brown. There's really no black person. And white people, they sure ain't white. They closer to pink than me. I really believe we as Americans should stop identifying as other stuff and other adjectives before American and just go as an American. I believe that extra identified just adds a lot of internal problems that we already face in the country, just adds more people to the body. If we just like we American, like people like they whatever, you feel me like it'll really calm down a lot of bullshit. But that's just me. Yeah. I I I think they would go as Caucasians, but I think that the you know, a lot of that is just simply the fact that they the ones that make all of the damn uh forms and shit that we end up filling out. So that's what I should always say. Like they, yeah, they make the categories based off of what fits their narrative at the time. So like I mean, you know. Yeah. yeah, you know. Third one. Something to think about. Undisciplined boys grow to be undisciplined men. Mothers and fathers out there, ain't nothing wrong with spoiling your kids. But make sure you have boundaries, rules, and structure to go right along with all that spoiling you're doing. That checks out 100%. Just that something to think about. 100%. C. C. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> No lies detected there, champ. I may be wrong on this next one, but hey, that's something to think about. There have been no cures created, made or invented since the one for polio. I guess it's more money and making things to help us live with the disease instead of eradicate it altogether. We've been dealing with countless illnesses for many moons. Sure, some medical advances have happened, but none of them aim to cure, only for sustainability. I, yeah, I definitely know we haven't eradicated any since polio. And that's, it's only like four diseases in the history of mankind that we've actually even eradicated, like four or five that we've actually eradicated. So if we're going by that definition of cure, then hell yeah. Um, I think there's things that we have that like will get rid of it if you get it, but <laughs> it still ain't. But it still ain't got rid of the fact that you can get it. it you know, mm. what I mean? like so it's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that pretty much checks out. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> No, because like, all right, so like if you look at the textbook definition of cure, like to restore the health or normality. So like there are like <laughs> certain blood diseases that you can take a certain medicine and you cannot have that particular condition or, or like shit. So there are shit that you can cure, but when you talk about eradicating, yeah, hell yeah. It's most shit in mankind, you can still catch it if you're around it. It's just a matter of it might not be in your area, but yeah. Nigga still dropping dead of malaria and shit somewhere in the world. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's yes, this, like this somewhere, goes along. somewhere in the world. It's a kid with scurvy. Yeah, <laughs> like think about that. Like shit was back hey. when pirates was running around. All right, hey. he got scurvy. Hey. Give me some lemon. When I was living in Norfolk, the last time I went to the hospital, they ain't had no beds. So we had to be in the hallway. It was a lady sitting across from me. When she got up, 
the text came in and it was lights on in the cleaning. I was like, what the hell are y'all doing? Do y'all do that in the air bed? They was like, no, nah, she had scurvy. We got to make sure we sanitize everything. Oh, see? I was they, like, shit, make sure you... I was like, spray on the head, too. Shit, I don't know how long that shit got all the weird shit out there that, like, that, that pilgrims was catching shit. They got shit that killed the Native Americans that's still hanging around on blankets today. <laughs> like, so, like, I think that's the, that's the, I, I definitely roll with you. If you're looking at Cure, it's like, we can't get this shit no more yet. It's mo- 99% of the viruses that have ever been around. They still walk around kicking folk ass somewhere in the world. You ain't like goes. This goes along with what I was saying earlier about death having a bad promoter. There is a lot. There is a lot of money in sick people. I tell you what, he got a bad promoter, but that motherfucker is efficient as fuck. Like, he damn sure need a good promoter because his work is impeccable. He don't miss mm-hmm. that motherfucker. And lately, he oh, has been man. on a free. I know he has been an employee of the month for his company. He be, he be not that motherfucker is kicking everybody. And then we just lose more. Fun. Like, we lose some matter every week. Yeah, yeah. I got I to gotta rest in peace on every good and fuckery it seemed like for the yeah, past two. Yeah, it's becoming a memorial. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. For a whole year. Now, <clears throat> the last one, something to make you think. We'll end it up with a would you rather, just to make you think. Okay. All right, but I won't answer some wise. Would you rather re- relive your worst day for 24 hours or suffer the worst possible pain ever for two hours? Can I ask a question? Sure. Do you still live either way? Yeah. Okay. So after that 24 hours or after that two hours, you go back to your normal life. Yep. Oh, I'm taking the worst possible pain anyone could ever do. $500. But you pay? I don't know. What is my worst possible day? Because there's a lot of them. So I don't know exactly. Because either way is a gamble. And I don't know. But that pain, man, that pain. I don't know, man. I don't know. Two hours. But, you know, two hours. It's just two hours. Mm-hmm. Two hours is a long ass time. <laughs> but two hours is a long ass Because I know, man, because I work 10 hour shifts. And let me tell to, you, this thing about to feel consistent, the same consistent pain for two straight hours, the worst possible pain any human can feel for two straight hours. I don't know, man. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I'm going to think. But if I relive that day, that means I actually <laughs> lived through that day. Yep, you know, whatever, that. whatever happened that day, you going all through that shit again. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my, my worst day was going through that uh, accident while I almost died. So uh, I'm going to take that two hours because that was 24 hours of the worst pain that I can imagine. So I'll take two hours of some, some worse shit than to relive that 24 hours. Like, just that okay. yeah, that's good. Because I feel like if I got to relive it, then that means it plays out exactly how it did again for 24 straight hours. That means my wife is stressed the fuck out again for 24 straight hours. I don't have my son again for 24 straight. Like, no, nah, I'm good. I'm going to go ahead. Uh, yeah, at least my wife can hold my hand as I cry like a bit. <laughs> the worst, the worst day. <laughs> Shit, Is I it like the worst day so out. far? Like, it's going to be okay, son. <laughs> Shit. It's not yeah, like your, the worst. Yeah, okay. your worst day. Because your you can't re- relive something that's in the future, of course. Yeah. yeah um, exactly. That's the thing. Like, it's, it's the worst thing that you know you have been through. Ah, oh, oh, I'm good. I'm happy. I can't, I can't think I'm going to die before my wife, before I get to see my wife again or before I get to see my son born. Like, that was the worst. That shit was worse than the pain. I can do two hours, man, because I had a whole 24 hours of pain before. Ooh. So like it that that's the kicker. If I had like if I had a whole day where I was feeling bad, like feeling pain, like in, in general, if that's my worst day or whatever, then it's like I might as well just take the two hours. <clears throat> yeah, I'm like them other 22 hours of that day might be amazing. <laughs> you know, that shit hurt like fuck. 
as soon as them two hours is done, at that, at that, at that 59, 59 seconds, all of a sudden that nigga just feel great and go skipping along. Oh shit. Nigga find some money on the ground. Get my don't kill you, man. For dinner. <laughs> get some coon noon. <laughs> like, I go to the All right. like, next thing I got a mutant power. I start flying and shit. All right, I, I see all my family that day. Y'all niggas surprise me and fly down. And what? The rest of that day might be amazing. I'll take them two hours. Turn out I create the antibodies that kill off COVID because of those two hours. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm, excited, man. I'm looking at it like a, a, a day that's because he didn't say you lose like whatever you got now. So I ain't trying to go back and relive that day. And I got this fucking anxiety shit, man. Fuck no. I'm sitting there half dying and fucking losing my mind at the same time. No, sir. <laughs> when I come out of that shit, I might be back shit crazy. I might do some damage that I can't unlive. Mm-hmm. I think I'm already bad shit crazy, so that probably just make it worse. I cry like a bitch and piss myself for two hours to go ahead about my life. If I if I ain't got no other choice anyway. I don't want to I don't want to be bad shit crazy because I think bad shit is what caused COVID. So I don't want to start another. I don't know if it caused COVID, but I damn sure know that uh, <laughs> it was a clue for Ace Ventura. <laughs> bitch. Wow. Oh. <laughs> Cool. And they're fucking a princess. Classic. And speaking of Chicago, uh <laughs> Kwame Brown and Gilbert Arenas is what I want. Oh Jesus. Um these two Negroes. Um I guess for y'all have y'all have done research, correct? Yeah, I saw that. Earlier, man. I try, I try to bear my soul through that whole video, man. It's a lot, it's a lot more than just that, but um, for the context for the people out there, obviously, if you're not a sports fan, Kwame Brown and Gilbert Arenas were basketball players in the NBA. They played together early in their career. Um, Gilbert Arenas was not a number one pick. He was drafted, you know, in the first round, but not he wasn't like a highly touted pick coming out of college in that. In the same way, Tommy Brown came straight out of high school as a number one pick. Um, a lot of people over the years have considered Kwame a bust. Um, I personally, based off of what the real thought around him was and his end result, I, I think he kind of played up to what he was. He was hurt a lot, though, too. So I, I do take that into consideration. But because people have called him a bust over the years, it, I, he's been quiet for all these years because he stopped playing like in the 2000s. So it, it's been a minute. But um, anyway, re, Matt Barnes and Steven Jackson, two other former NBA, NBA players, they got a podcast. Gilbert Arenas was on there. And while they was on there, uh, Matt Barnes and Steven Jackson was kind of like laughing at Kwame, calling him a bust, um, basically downplaying his career. Um. It was all about basketball. They didn't call him like out his name or nothing, but they did clown his basketball career. Kwame then comes out, starts a beef with them, and is like, you know, y'all some bitch niggas, y'all doing the white book, the white man's work. And it's from there, Kwame Brown builds his career. And we all know he pretty much calls out people who he feels are buck dancing or who he feels like are talking about black people in a disparaging way. Cool with me. In all of this, though, when the shit first popped off, Gilbert Arenas had no, he didn't say anything bad about Kwame at all. He was like, after the podcast, he was like, hey, man, I, I know this dude. He had knocked niggas out. I'm cool with him. Me and him was teammates. Like, I ain't got nothing bad to say about him. I'm out this shit. Fast forward. And, you know, this is what kind of brings me to the situation today. These two Negroes, uh, Gilbert Arena said some disparaging remarks about uh, Lupita Nyong'o. Kwame Brown said some fucked up shit about Gilbert. Gilbert then went, had another Vlad TV interview drop. All this is from Vlad TV interviews now, um, and uh-huh. in which he was taught he was he Vlad basically tried to do Vlad tactics and tried to stir up some bullshit and was like, yeah, so Kwame was a bust, right? And Gilbert was basically like, no, nah, actually, you know what I mean? He 
he was my teammate. He did this, that, and the third. He he was good for me. You know, he was put in a situation that was messed up for him, though. And I think that would have more to do with anything. But I think if you go back and look at that draft, he still get drafted number one. Da 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 da. So basically, kind of bigging up Kwame and kind of you know making sure that he looked out for him. Kwame takes this and goes the fuck off on Gilbert, and then that brings us to this big argument. Um, they get on this dude's podcast or show or whatever. It was a live stream, and basically. Kwame Brown is drinking a beer and yelling at Gilbert Arenas, calling him all kind of bitch asses and beta males, while Gilbert Arenas keeps asking a very sensible question to me. So what did I do to you? Now, having seen all of this stuff, though, for yourself, does Kwame have valid arguments against Gilbert? It depends on what you mean is valid, valid to him. Yeah, valid to me. I don't really know, man. Like, I, I don't see Gil as, as verbally said nothing publicly that's negative. Now, as far as Kwame feels, he don't want nobody speaking on his name, period. He's asked people not to bring his name up and not to answer questions on him. But if I'm your friend, I'm going to hold you down. Somebody say something negative about you, I ain't going to be like, well, you need to ask him that. If I'm on a Vlad interview of Vlad, like, so Kwame's a bus, right? I'm not going to affect him, like, well, you need to ask Kwame that. That's going to lead people to think, oh, yeah, you do think he that. You just don't want to say that. Right. Or, or I'm going to stand up for who I would think is a, a close associate, or in that instance, I guess they were friends. I don't know. We're former teammates. So he's going to ride for you. I think Kwame has Kwame has been is in the in a place where he's so used to people talking negative about him anytime his name is brought up, he just has an automatic defense. Like you didn't say my name, okay, what you said my name about, I'm just gonna be mad, period. But regardless of what you say, I'm gonna have a I'm gonna have an ill ill effect towards you. That's it. that's what his been he's been molded to. Um as far as what he was saying doing the doing a little live stream podcast thing. He really won't make it no valid points as far as what Gilbert said to him. He was bringing up all was of old shit from when they played together, and and trying to judge Gilbert's character based on his past actions. You can't judge a man in his forties for what he did in his twenties, or stupid shit he did in his twenties. Because if that's so damn, I'd be judged real Boy. fucked up. <laughs> Boy, I'll be real fucked up if you gonna judge me from what I did, especially from twenty five to twenty nine. So I mean, ah, shit. But you don't. You should judge a man on his current actions, the way he's doing, and what he's becoming, not what he was. I mean, people talking about Kwame's basketball skills. They're not talking about you now because you retired. As you kept saying, he was retired. He's retired now. I can do whatever. I'm retired. Yeah, you retired. But just like they talk about Jordan, talk about anybody else stats, or and they talk about Manute Bowl stats. They talk about how he got more what more more blocks than they do points. I think that's what it is about Manute Bowl. But mm-hmm. you don't see him getting mad. That's a true stat, man. If you talk about your stats, <clears throat> you talk about your stats. If someone has an opinion about your career, that's just their personal opinion. You can't don't 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 take it to heart. Everybody got an opinion. You got an opinion. You out here vividly disrespecting grown men, calling them bitch asses and all this. <laughs> I mean, I don't believe, like, in the bigger scale of things, I don't believe Kwame may have valid arguments in a bigger scale. But in his mind, based on what he thinking, the trauma he's been molded to, yeah, it's valid to him. Right. Um, Pat, did you think that Gilbert actually disrespected Kwame in this situation? Or like in, in any of the uh I know Kwame kind of rattled down some things that he felt that Gilbert did to him, like getting him bent or he said that he felt like Gilbert messed up the situation with some side woman or some woman he was messing with at the time. Um based off of hearing Gilbert explain himself and hearing Kwame's like uh, what he said Gilbert did. Do you feel that Gilbert actually disrespected Kwame in any way? And if- no, not not to me. I don't feel like he did any of that. Really, um, my because I was like on certain stuff. I was like looking up the actual video that the last thing he said with Vlad or whatever. And to me, he just seemed like 
he was just trying to say something cordial and move on to the next subject because he know how Kwame is, basically. Now, I, I get Kwame mission as far as I don't want to give other people I don't want other people to use my name to give other people rates or times of views or whatever like if it because that's my name or whatever but at the same time just like Gilbert was saying it's a black it's, it's a, predom a predominantly black sport pretty much the, like the the points the value like the points that he had it was kind of like overturned by the simple fact that it's a predominantly black sport they don't have no choice but to talk about black mm -hmm. people there was like a like more dominant multi-racial uh players out there they will be talking about those players but and i and to me i just feel like kwame had a PTSD moment or something like that and just wanted, I feel like Kwame is using this to, to talk shit or say whatever he always felt to the people that was around him at that time mm. or whatever. Oh, Gilbert said something? Oh, this is how I feel about you. Cause you notice every single time he brings something up, it's always some random personal thing that has nothing to do with the actual mm -hmm. question kept saying was um what did i do at that time pretty much right or whatever and then when he finally said uh, it's like when he got to a point where he finally just said so if i just said you need to speak with kwame would that be fine or whatever like it, it just uh i just feel like kwame is just using this time as like i'm gonna vent on all y'all this is my revenge of the nerds moment, basically. <laughs> I, I definitely can see that um, as a possible motive. Um, I got a couple of ways I guess I looked at it. Um, I think that it's two schools of thought that Kwame is attacking, but he's confusing them and making it hard for himself to be heard. And for the conversations that are probably valid conversations to actually be had. Like, I think he's coming at one side of things from like, he's viewing it from a race thing where he sees that like, I was in this industry where I feel like these white people kind of manipulated and used my people against my people, including myself in my career. And now I'm frustrated about it and I'm tired of it. So I'm gonna vent out about it. I think that's what we get shit like the speaking out against people like Stephen A. Smith, Charlemagne as well, who hadn't really even came at him really hard, but he just was kind of latching on to anybody that's like he saw as that symbol of that. Um, and then there's a second part of, I think maybe like you talking about, Pat, where like he's vengeful about shit not going right in his career. He has some beefs with niggas from way back then that he just never said nothing about. And now it's like, oh, I'm saucy, fuck this shit. I'm older. Ah, ah. I'm gonna say everything I got to say to y'all niggas now. Um, I think the problem with that is though, like, like the thing he said, he had an issue with Gilbert about the Lupita Nyong'o uh, comment. I think that's a valid conversation to bring up and have with Gilbert. But mm -hmm. when you're then convoluting that with the shit about talking about he got you benched, but then there's no evidence that he got you benched. It literally looks like you played worse in the game. Like he kept showing these. I remember it was one video Kwame was showing all these highlights because it was after uh, Gilbert was like, I didn't get you benched. You played bad in this game, and then this happened in the next series. So you, so the coach thought that you know you was getting booed at home game. So the coach set you down for that game, and then he. Get, Kwame was sitting there just kept playing these certain highlights, right? But then you go back and look at the full game, you realize that those highlights are spliced. It's like four or five plays from the entire game or the entire couple of games. So then it's like, well, damn, now you make yourself look worse. I think if he's stuck to don't bring up anything about basketball, I think he comes across looking a lot better. And I also think that, like, niggas in general got to get out of the habit of thinking that 
Like, it's one thing if you're, like, just talking funny and you hanging out with your boys and you just loud playing around. But, like, niggas got to stop thinking that because I'm talking louder and I'm cursing you out that I'm winning a debate or I'm making sense. Like, just because you loud and yes. you a bunch of, like, flagrant-ass words don't make you right. It just make you look crazy because, for one, we not in the same room. So, like, nobody knows how that would really go. So, it's like, it doesn't give you any points of, like, oh, he tough when you yelling at a nigga in a box on a screen. And then two, like, you end up sounding crazy because you get into this rant where you're just rambling. Like this other dude making you look crazy because they talking logical as fuck. And you're calling them beta, but you're looking like the emotional motherfucker that's nyah, 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 nyah. And, you, mm-hmm. and you said this. And so it make you look crazy. You know what I mean? Like I think, I don't, don't want to keep seeing these niggas look. I don't like seeing, like, I think it's a lot of conversations that black men need to have with other black men. I like it. I, I like that energy. I'm down with that. But I think it's like, it needs to start being had in a way where the conversations actually don't get lost into like the sensationalism of it. Cause now it's a lot of people just talking about the fuckery when like there's some points in there that can be, that is probably some shit that we can address as a community and, and get right. But because y'all, acting like child, like children, or because one dude is on there acting like a child at the moment, like it make it, it make it all go out the window. And I think, yeah, I, I'd, I'd like to see Kwame get back to a place where he just like, is talking about like the actual social issues that he's kind of been honing in on and shit, as opposed to like getting into the personal stuff so much. Cause he loses his, it, it takes away from his overall mess. I, I, um, I like that you brought that up about women in front of the camera and everything. I I, I love this age of technology because it's been plenty of arguments where I look, I'm sarcastic as fuck <clears throat> pretty much when I have argument. It's been plenty of arguments I have with just random people. You know, do you have like you no know, arguments with the random street dude that just think they loud if they loud and just scream a lot of shit, they still sound right or whatever this this gives me that moment and then capturing that on video and letting people see that may just calm some shit down like oh so that's what i look like when i wild out like that yeah <clears throat> yeah so now, because just think about it. If that was a, that, if you put that same situation, take away the cameras or whatever, and put that in a random, like you're at the bar, or mm-hmm. if you're in the, in the, in the locker room, or, you know, I'm just any. Knocked, I'm about to get knocked the fuck out before it even get that far. Or, like as soon as just, we, just in the streets. As soon as we get to all the bitch asses and the, and the, and the, you were mm-hmm. using this and using that, and my mama ain't naming mm-hmm. up that shit. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I mean, I, even I'm assuming it, at that point that yeah, well, you don't really want to talk. So at that point, I ain't gonna even go no further. Like, uh, especially if you all getting aggressive, and yeah, I'm gonna assume that you uh about to take it there. So I'm gonna try to go ahead and get mine off her, set it to mm-hmm. you. And then if if the person decides to do the peaceful ride or whatever, it's gonna make it's gonna look like the loud dude is the one that won the argument. When if you like, if there was some playback. You can see that no, nah, this dude is stupid. This <laughs> at all. He loud as shit, but loud and wrong. Yeah. And yeah, 30, a lot of loud. yeah, 30 points that don't got no factual basis to it. So yeah, you got me bitch. And, well, well, no, I didn't. And then I called all the teammates and the coach, and they also said that I didn't. Well, 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 you got me, you got me messed up with the girl because you told her. Well, well, here's the text message right here where you can see <laughs> says that I didn't do that. Well, well, you get, I, 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 I can drink a beer if I want to. Nigga, now you look like a whole man. Man. Now, Nigga, don't fight that hard. Yeah, that, was, that was the worst as a person uh-huh. who formerly drank and drank heavily. That was the worst shit ever to make you not look like that. <laughs> like, that was don't the be used to fight for like, tactics. So. Don't, don't fight him about the bill, man. Like, it's bigger shit. It's bigger fish to fry in this conversation. Like, that. don't let that be the part where you, well, I'm going to drink my beer if I want you. You can tell me. Like, come on, bro. 
Come on, man. Hey, you sound like he's got clowned by the dude that's hosting because he, I, he he's making the joke out of it pretty much. Like, you got to, at some point, man, people got to start, like, I like the debate. I like us being able to have discourses where we don't agree. That's okay. That's how people learn. That's how you push your thinking mm-hmm. forward. That's how you go back and do more research. And either you edify the, the thoughts you already had or you revise those thoughts based on new information. But if you just keep arguing, don't nobody learn nothing but how to yell louder and how to get a better microphone than somebody else so their voice project louder or how to figure out a new way to curse so it sounds cooler to the audience. Like, And then everybody walk away dumber. Like, I, I I think that's my frustration with that whole thing. Like, it's two dudes that, like, like, if Kwame had a real conversation with Gilbert, I think they would actually get somewhere. And Gilbert might even concede to some of Kwame's points if they had an actual just conversation and not, like, uh, I'm coming in trying to, like, punk you and sun you and shit. Because, like, the shit don't translate on video, y'all. Like, if you're going to try to punk somebody, pull up on them in person and do all that. <laughs> like, if you're going to do that cornball shit, do that. But don't. That through the box shit, it looks stupid. You look like you on fucking Hollywood squares. Like, you know how look. dumb that would look if, like, Pat was right now, like, oh, I'm about to sun tears. Through the screen? <laughs> Nigga, we See, are not away. Like, ain't <laughs> one of us about to teleport. We ain't night crawler. So, like, what really yeah. are we going to do other than her? Uh, I'm going to say some words to you. I'm going to say those words. You bet you feel it over there 2,000 miles away. <laughs> like, one nigga's in Cali, one nigga's in Georgia, South Carolina somewhere. Like, what? <laughs> no, like, it didn't work. If it's on that That's level right. where you got to call a nigga a bitch-ass nigga and all that, at that point, get the fuck off the internet, get on the phone, get on your tablet, get on your computer, book your flight. <laughs> Send a private text to that person. Drop the pen. I'm on the way. And go. But that, I hate this. This shit is so stupid in 2022 watching dudes argue in these little boxes, man. That shit. Mm-hmm. Like. <laughs> look, look. It's and I'm a, cool it's with like internet. passion conversation. Like, you know, I'm down with that. Like, I, I think that that's okay. But this, I'm a, yeah, you bitch ass nigga. And you's a. Sir. Look. Sorry. Internet, You're in media box. history. Um, what I'm trying to say, the the internet has a media history that continuously shows that anytime a man gets loud, he ends up looking stupid. Period. Anytime, like, like with any opinion, if if you don't have, like, if you have those moments where somebody just with any opinion, with you, that's just not get back, emotional. Back, back. Cause I've heard some, I've heard some people get loud. Like I've heard like two professors have like a loud intellectual debate on like the history of Samaria and shit. And they loud as hell, but they dropping facts with their shit. So that the shit that they feel is backed by some type of research. You sound dumb yeah. and loud as hell, and you're not making any point. You just cursing. Like at that point, like so what? So what are you so? When are you gonna pull up or say something else? Like, cause at this point, like, what, what are we? Where are we going? We can't go nowhere. It is. There's literally at that point the conversation's over. We either gonna fight or we gonna get the hell offline. Cause now we just sitting here and I'm just listening <coughs> to our curse words. I can go, you know, pull up fucking uh, Yosemite Sam or Donald Duck or somebody and watch that shit. Want to see a nigga just think- to curse for no reason? Fuck. He lost the argument as soon as he starts saying beta and stuff like that. I think anytime a male, anytime a male use beta and alpha in an argument, they end up looking beta in the in the process. I'm so sick oh, of the term, yo. I'm so sick of the term. Beta. I'm so sick of the term. I don't want to hear beta nothing unless it's about them damn fish. Them fighting fish. <laughs> Oh, it better be like a test. It better be a technology or something. I don't want to hear nothing about the males and stuff like that. Y'all just y'all care too much about how a, a man acts and not enough about how you acting. My thing is, like, let's get this shit. First of all, 
Let me just go ahead. I, I guess this is the perfect time to just go ahead into the next. <laughs> <laughs> um, hey, I'm good segue. Oh, uh, yeah. Why are we talking about beta? Um, y'all know I started this little Tizzers Matrix Decoded uh, series where we're looking at red pill concepts and seeing if they hold weight under scrutiny by men who are not in that. Community. Awesome, man. Um, and I feel like we, we already defined what an actual alpha and beta is. So in that situation, I'm looking at Kwame has his following. Gilbert has his following. They're both alphas in that situation. So like 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 let's start let's stop redefining shit and making up definitions that don't that that don't nobody else agree with but you because it fits your what you your, your narrative is like words got meaning alpha and beta got meanings we defined them last week if y'all want to see that go ahead pull back up on episode fifty nine um we we already went to that but that beta shit pissed me off but let's continue the series this week um as we explore more uh, of their concepts. And the goal of this uh, segment is not to, is not to do anything like to like necessarily bash anybody or even bash their concepts. It's more to look at their concepts because they are a very controversial community and section of uh, the, the male community online. And the goal is to just basically explain what the concepts are, explore how viable they are, like, how, how backed up by the actual facts are they? And then to explore and, and see if they are true and then to get rid of what's not based in fact or general consensus and keep the things that can actually add to a man's ability to, to edify and display what being a real man should look like in 2022. And it's based off of us, the partners, but I honestly think that we are good representation, representation of like, real manhood looking three different ways. So I, I, I feel like we are qualified to speak on it. Um, and yeah, the goal ain't necessarily to agree or disagree with Red Pill, but just, you know, more to see what's viable, get rid of what's harmful. And then last week, we determined that the concept of alpha males being providers and beta males being uh, the used party or unavailable to provide, we, we had determined that that was a fallacy. Um, we defined alpha and beta in their true context and showed how a real man should use these concepts to be better. So tonight, I want to dig into the next concept and see um, what that is. Um, so the next concept that I've heard or a talking point that I've heard coming from that uh, community of the red pill manosphere or whatever you want to call it, is that strong women, and I put quotes around strong women because it uh, seems to be a certain definition of what they see as strong women. They are not generally desirable to alpha or high value men. So I guess I wanted to first start it off with let's kind of seeing like, what is a strong woman? Like, what do y'all consider a strong woman to be? When you hear that term, what do you think of? I'll go first. Now, in researching this topic, I went ahead and just did some Googling. So, we got two different definitions that I give you what I think of. Now, I Googled what is a strong black woman, and you get a definition with that one. But if you Google what is a strong woman, you get something totally different. So, I'm going to give you both of them. We're going to start with what is a strong black woman. It's going to trip you out real quick. Strong, a strong black woman is defined by scholars as an archetype of how an ideal black woman should act. This has been characterized by three things, emotional restraint, independence, and caretaking. Okay, now I'll give you the other one. These are the characteristics of a strong woman by Google. Confident, proud, not afraid to speak up, optimistic, productive, caring, and the ability, the ability to be vulnerable. Okay, now what is a strong woman to me? A strong woman to me is one who has the ability to want a man but not need a man. Um, one who's able to stand on her own two feet and handle her business um, in a professional manner. Um, a strong woman is a woman who knows how to do the normal day to day um, just as anybody else should. Um, I believe a strong woman is, uh, let's say, vocal as far as her wants and needs. She's strong enough to express that. I'm saying that way. 
um, a certain level of confidence comes with that. Um, you don't really have to be a, a, a good caretaker to be a strong woman, but in my eyes, I would look for a strong woman to be some type of a good caretaker. Um, that's my in my definition. Um, um, I just love an optimistic person, but as far as falling in the realm of being a strong woman, that optimism stuff really don't that that it has nothing to do with it to me. But um, it really boils down to I'm a, at the end of the day I'm all a simple person. So when I look for when I looked for a strong woman and I got my wife, I got exactly what I was looking for. So I mean, the definition I gave, what examples I've given, in my perspective, was basically what I think. Right on, right on. What's that, you fat? What do, what do you consider to be a strong one? See, that's the it's a double edged sword in that question because what I may feel as a strong woman may be different from what these red pill dudes. I'm asking you what you feel. Yeah, we no, I, I'm I'm leading. I'm, yeah. I'm no, I'm leading towards that. Um, that and I almost feel like I feel like women should define that. Bit more I'll, I'll get into it but this to me I just feel like a woman that can take care of herself uh don't have to rely on anyone and or um not even that just a woman that can take care of herself um no accountability for her faults and just take care of her responsibilities or whatever pretty much that that's why I feel like is a, a strong woman to me or whatever so I, at, at the same time, I'm kind of like, hmm. if, if it was a actual said definition somewhere, somewhere in a book, I feel like a woman should be involved in that definition. Whatever. Yeah. You, you know, that, that's, so that's why I'm, that's why I say it's a double-edged sword about that, that question pretty much, but that's how I feel. But what a strong woman should be, whatever. Um, I think for me, I'd say a strong woman would definitely be. Uh, it's real simple for me, I guess. A woman that's just strong, uh, as strong if she is willing to accept and admit to who she truly is, like be who they are instead of being any type of archetype. And I feel like that's kind of what leads to. Men not having a shared definition. I feel like men would have an easier way of like understanding women as a whole if women stopped trying to be any type of standard. Like I feel at one point women were trying to be the beauty queen trophy wife. And then you had movements that happened that women, you know, said that no, nah, now we want to be the business woman. But in trying to fit all those stereotypes, they're not seeking to do anything that's actually appealing to the other species or the other half of what they're trying to attract. Now, if they're not trying to attract a man, then that doesn't apply to them at all. I'm, I'm talking about cisgender women that are looking for, and, and heterosexual women that are looking for heterosexual men. And in that arena, I feel like it's a smaller and smaller group of women that may be okay with just being who they are as opposed to trying to live up to a standard that women have set for that their their time or whatever like but like right now it's the era of like the boss chick and i want to do this and i don't need no man for nothing i got my own bag but in doing that i do feel like I don't feel like a strong woman necessarily mean that they sassy. Like, I feel like women come with a certain amount of sass that kind of makes them a woman. Like, they're, they're supposed mm -hmm. to be more emotional. They're supposed to be a little bit, you know, like, like that. that's kind of part of the attraction for me in a woman is that they don't act like my homeboy. They not going to be as cold. Like, they going to kind of balance me out. You know what I mean? So, but I do think that there's something to sit, be said about women looking at each other for validation more than us at times, which can lead to men then mischaracterizing because they're not letting us in on the process at all and they don't care about our input. Like, I feel like with men, a lot of our, even if 
the if you look at men who conform to a standard, it's usually not a standard set by other men. It's a standard set by what women are attracted to at that time. Like, yep. like women are dressing and doing things for each other while we are doing things for them. And it leads to this subset of men Ill, illy defining a strong woman as a loud woman who can't be submissive and can't accept a man who is more of a dominant personality. And I think that, that don't necessarily line up because there are a lot of women, like my wife is what they would probably consider a strong woman. Yet she submits to me on a daily basis because like, that's not just who she is. That's her in a certain setting. Like if you catch her in a business meeting, she's going to be way more assertive. But she, she has multifacets to her personality. And I think most women do. So I think that like, I think that a strong woman don't necessarily define, is, can't be defined as their definition anymore. I think, because I noticed none of us said the things that I usually hear them saying, which is like loud, bossy, can't be submissive, well, argumentative, um, disagreeable, all of these things are what they don't, don't even want a man or need a man, but wants a man. Um, I, think, I think that should be a whole different term than strong woman. Yes, and that's what I'm trying to do in this series is redefine and put things in their actual realistic context based off of definitions like when Face came in, even the definition that he read which I don't know, but it sounded like it came more from a, either a scholarly perspective or a woman's perspective, which gives it even more credence than what we're saying. And that didn't even match what these mm. the Redfield community are saying is defined as a strong woman. So, like, I think the first thing we need to do is strip it of its negative connotation and just say that a strong woman is a woman that matches, that can be all of those things, but like, is not pigeonholed into one specific way of being, but she's herself. And that can be all of the things that Faith said, all of the things that Pat said, all the things I said, like, because that's what women are. Like, just like men, we not like a monolith, like Faith always said, like, there's more than just one aspect to us. So mm -hmm. I think we first need to just kind of strip that negative connotation off it and just say that a strong woman is a woman that's able to be herself and she cool with it whether that's loud and bossy or quiet and humble or anywhere in between on that spectrum. You know what I mean? I, I think that's kind of what we, I, I, do y'all agree? Let me say that. Yeah. I definitely agree. Oh, I yes. definitely agree. I don't know what the term is for that other argumentative, uh, competitive, overly competitive uh, I think that's woman. Because you got men that's like that. <laughs> you said that's a what? That's just a jerk. You got men that's like that. Yeah. <laughs> like that is, uh, exactly. Person. Um, so we've already established now what a strong woman is. Um, and what this con when they when they use this concept, what they're actually saying. Um, so now having said that, if that's if strong women are not are, are not necessarily undesirable to alpha high value men or men in general, or, or alpha men in general, I should say. What are the desirable qualities that a man that is a leader or an alpha male, as we defined it, would consider desirable in a woman? Um, I look for someone who can compliment me and be my equal. Um, you, where I'm weak, you, you're strong and vice versa. Um, what I can't do, you can do, vice versa. Um, I'm emotionally cold a lot of times. So I need somebody who's emotionally open. Mm -hmm. That's a that's a strong woman to me. Excuse me. <laughs> Thank you. Um, like I was saying, um, desire another desire quality. Um, just be motivated or have the ability to motivate. Um, there's some women out there who are very lackluster and don't care about what they man do. It is they can be content and whatever. But to have someone who actually pushes you to live up to your potential, that's that's a strong, good quality in a woman to, to me. Um, um, the ability to be sexual or have a um, how can how can I say it? what's the word? what's the real word? Um, I don't know, 
but the ability to just be to be sexy. You feel me? Okay. You don't have to be the sex, you don't have to be the sexiest woman in the world, but have the ability to turn it on and be sexy. You feel me? Have that femininity to you. You feel me? Like I believe like a certain part of the romantic part of the relationship really comes from a woman and her being that sexy part. That that that's the, she's the Throw intimate. Off some and shit. And some you feel me? Like yeah, do do that. I mean, just, just, you, I mean, you ain't even got to do all that. Just be just be dainty a little bit just be a little dainty be that be that sexy in a sex relation in a relationship to make a man feel like a man you feel like you you don't want nobody who gone i'm gonna lift this into the couch oh you get that one no i got this <laughs> i got I this no, i don't want no bob he feel me like <laughs> it, 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 it's, it's, nice you, it's nice for you it's nice for you it's nice for your woman to offer that help just to see that she supports you. But it's a, it's a, different, a whole different thing when she already got the end of the couch up. Like, come on, get yours. Pick that shit up. If you're like, you know, you're like, you Unless you're into them bodybuilder women, in which case that yeah, might be the way that you attract yeah. you. But I feel you. Like, like, and, <laughs> and, like, and like with most things, and like with most things in this red field community, like when you we reevaluate the concepts most of them are situational because being each man is different and they've experienced different things in life they want a different type of woman so even each quality in that woman will be maybe different but man we just talking about us i mean like i said i'm a simple person man like i just want a woman who will compliment me sometimes i don't feel like talking for shit and i don't and i'm not a, not a real conversationist but i'm a good <laughs> listener so I like a woman who talks a little bit. If you don't talk too much, but just talk enough that we can always have a conversation, always have something that we can bounce off each other. You feel me? Um, I used to hate the mornings. My wife is a morning person. I love the mornings now because that got me out. She got me out there because she's always smiling every morning. Good morning. And I wasn't dying. Uh, yeah, whatever. But now, good morning. You know. it, it, took, it took damn near 10 years, but hey, I'm here now. <laughs> I used to be a vampire. I used to love the nighttime. Now, shit, it's a struggle for me to stay up at 11 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> shit, that ain't just because I got kids. Shit, I was I was a night shift and vampire. Like, I used to be up all times of the morning. But now, just being with my wife, like, hey, I got trans into the morning time. It's a, it's, it's a better flow, better. It's just healthier. Uh, I need a woman who's going to consider my health as well as, as well as hers. You feel me? But be considerate. Look out for me as well. You're looking out for yourself. I mean, take take me into consideration. Think about me as much as you think about yourself because I'm damn sure I do it. Some like compliments. You feel me? Like real compliment of each other. Like to be a yang to my yang. That's real. That's real. Pat, what you uh what what would you say are the desirable qualities that men actually find desirable in a woman? Damn, I'm gonna make it real. I'm gonna make it real easy, real easy. Everything that Faith said and be my peace. I, I just be my peace. You no, know, mm. go to work every day. You gotta deal with people and their personalities, and you know, you extra drama. You get all that. I don't want no extra drama. Just be my fucking peace. Yeah, I, I would say definitely. I agree with Pat. Like, I think. I would only have one sentence and that would be like the number one desirable thing that I see that men find uh, attractive is like, allow me to be me. If you do that, I'm usually like, usually the men that I'm talking to at least, or the men that I've experienced and heard talk on, on panels or, you know, even in my personal life, like most of them, it's not necessarily that they can't stand the woman. It's just that the woman holds them to a standard that they like it's like I can deal with you but you can't deal with nothing I do just let me be me and then we good like because I'm not you yeah, I ain't agree with it a lot of yeah like <laughs> if you look at the voices a lot of times it's the woman that's that's bouncing and I think it's because like men a lot of times like once we've picked a woman like we've already established like that this the one if we've made it that far so like we chilling as long as you keep letting us be us. And I think a lot of women in the beginning will let you be you because it's new. And then as you go on, sometimes they'll change it up. So like, if you can just let us be us, I think that's the reason that I'm with my wife for this long is because like, through every phase that I've been through as I've evolved since she met me, like, 
she's allowed me to be me. And then like try to pigeonhole me and like, oh, you got to be like this or you got to be like that. Like, now has she asked me to not do some fuck shit to her? Absolutely. But you know what I mean? Like my personality never had to change or I never had to like be scrutinized about who, who I am so much. You know what I mean? So I, I think that that's, a, that's the number one thing. Like, just let men be men the same way they letting you be you. Like, if the man is cool with your career and with your um, friend groups, usually the man don't start, or at least in my experience, I'm going to keep saying in my experience because I think Faith said a good thing, like, stuff is situational. You know, there's an exception to every rule. But in my experience, usually, like, when the man start complaining, it's because the woman been complaining about him. So now he's more likely uh. to be like, well, fuck it then. I, if I can't do it, then you can't either. So, like, I, I think, I, I don't know that the word is agreeable, but accepting. Like, if you've accepted this uh-huh. and you decided to be with him, then that means you chose him for a reason. So let that be the guide and principle and not trying to, like, m- be with a man because of what you think you can mold him to or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. That would be my number one thing. Ooh, I got it. I got it. Love the man you see, not the possibility of what that man can be. Yeah, absolutely. That part. So, I would say uh, we pretty much knocked that one out. Yeah, we, we yeah another one debunked and redefined. So we we did mm-hmm. two there. Um, we redefined the term. We now not only know what an alpha and beta male really is, we now know what an actual strong woman is, and we actually know what men actually find desirable, as opposed to what a lot of the red pill propaganda may be saying is desirable. So, women, hold fast. Is not hopeless. There are some things that you can get right, but men do still love y'all, and it's not as complicated as some some people may be trying to make. It. So, yeah, mm-hmm. another one decoded on Tiz's matrix decoded, and another thing that I decoded um while we were um actually doing that last piece, man, was um I was looking at the clock, and it looks like it's that time, B. Looking at the rollings about that time. Yeah, yeah. It's about that time, y'all. Ha. It's yeah, about I that mean, time, you know, y'all. We definitely, ha. we definitely gone through the good and fuckery of that red pill shit. So, um, yep. It's time for the good and fuckery. Yeah. Good and fuckery. Good and fuckery. <laughs> Episode sixty. Yeah, of a good uh, info uh, <laughs> on the pod- podcast. Indeed, indeed, and indeed. Well, let me. Speak. All right, y'all. Uh, man. Get right into it. As get right into it. As we enter club tis. <laughs> yes, sir. Um, as I said earlier, it seems like we've been uh, saying it more and more often but uh rest in peace to the great Sidney Portier and uh, another one gone man and America's favorite dad Bob Saget well damn Danny Tanner yeah. I ain't know yeah. about Bob Saget one but the Sidney Portier I have seen but damn Bob yeah damn, Yo, I, I didn't know I didn't know Bob Saget he grew up in Norfolk oh word yeah, that just somebody just brought it up. I was like, oh shoot, because everything I seen about it was Philly, and then they had this ad, uh, they had this uh article. I think it was like Wavy 10. That's a news channel around here. Said that he grew up most of his childhood in Norfolk or whatever. So no, that's fine, yeah, rest in peace, Sid Portier and Bob Saget. Get that out the way. Right. Indeed. Man. Um Another, well, um, another right from the back of the dead, Aaliyah is uh, dropping a post. Hum- I can never say this word. Is it post humorous? Plus post post humus? Post humus? Post Well, she, 
They're dropping an Aaliyah album called need- Unstoppable. Oh. <laughs> It'll be out later on this month, and it has features with Drake and Snoop Dogg. So putting that out there, I saw it. I'm down for an Aaliyah hit. I'm, I'm with it. I'm down with it for sure. Yep, yep. Aaliyah is always one in a million. So, yeah. Um, next on the list, uh, Maya Angelou become the first Black woman to appear on the U.S. quarter as the Treasury begins distribution. <laughs> so, everyone, I would like to say congratulations uh, to Maya Angelou in this tribute because that's one hell of a tribute. But <laughs> as Black... Black History Month is approaching. We're going to start seeing the panda. Be vigilant. <laughs> hey, y'all panda like Dorothy Dandridge or something or, or something. Or do we got to keep getting these like the, the we gave y'all the quarter. Can we get the least can we stop getting the least aesthetically pleasing of our black queen legends on these coins where, where their faces are going to be memorialized like I mean, it just, it really is like a, um, we, got some like, pretty, we got some pretty legends too. And I know that that is like ugliest or whatever it is, but I'm like, damn, yo, like, like I'm looking at like a thousand years down the road, man. People gonna be like, who are these niggas? I mean, when you look at it, it's, it's wow. a real, it's, girl, a, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's not like it, it's her it's her face. It's, it's like man. her. It's like her young her doing the Randy Orton pose with a like a <laughs> eagle behind her, and it says Maya Angelou. Hey yo, on the I'm, sorry. I'm sorry, yo. I ain't even mad at the job, but we gotta go, yo. Cause I'm gonna get in trouble, yo. I, I'm I I can't speak. Face <laughs> back to you, face. <laughs> <laughs> Would you about to say face? Oh, well, I ain't gonna touch that one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so yeah, my Angelou is on the quarter. All right. Um, Will Smith like wins Best Actor at the 2022 Golden Globes for his acclaimed portrayal of Venus and Serena Williams' father in King Richard. I still ain't seen. It. I ain't seen it yet, but uh, from what I've seen is. I heard pretty it well. Yeah, I just haven't seen it yet, man. I gotta, I gotta catch up. Put that on my dock. Yeah, I'm gonna eventually see it when I get in the mood of watching like historical documentary type like stuff or whatever. But you know, he got a history of that, man. He was like King Richard. It was Ali. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like he's, he's he's got something under his belt. It was the dude from um, Pursuit of Happiness. True. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 Right. He, right. He's got a good, good run of those type of uh, movies. Yeah, pretty much. Got one of the best resumes in, in cinema, man. Like he he got some he got some shit under his belt there, bro. Like a baby Denzel. <laughs> he been looking for a long ass time, man. To be real, man. His his overall catalog might be deeper than than Denzel's. I I would have to like. Count them up. He got a lot of he got, like, more. he got a lot of shit, yo. A lot. Some unheard of shit too that ain't that popular, but he's still in it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Even them Netflix originals and shit, like Bright and shit. Like he he I like him. he's been more active than Denzel. Like Denzel, one of them dudes, like I might he might come out like once every three, four years, but when he do come out, it'd be some his performance. It's some shit. Amazing. But I think I it's think like, Denzel's you know, come out for everything. Like Will is more like open to like try a bunch of different shit. Denzel yeah. more like if it don't speak to his artistic sensibilities, man, I'm good. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, you know, I'll say um Will's a bit younger and Denzel's yeah. probably going down and like slow slowing down as far as acting in general and whatever. So, you know. I'll put it at that, but man, you know, it, if you really look at it, Will Smith may have a little bit more range because I ain't never seen Denzel in a, like a, as many sci-fi flicks as as Will Smith. So mm-hmm. it's true. Mm-hmm. 
But uh, matter of fact, uh, next on the list or whatever. Mm-hmm. Now, before we really officially started, we had this uh, conversation about ownership and everything and uh, why Will Smith, I mean, not Will, but uh, Lil Wayne should have uh, um, copyrighted the, the well, trademark the word bling. Yes. Yeah. Um, and this next <laughs> this next uh subject this is gonna be seem like completely left field to why I bring that up, but I explain why. Um it's up now, uh the vote for the second annual X-Men election. They had an X-Men election last year where people actually put in their votes of who they would want on the X-Men team for the next span of x-men uh comics for that year so you can actually vote on whatever x-men you want to see in action pretty much the only thing is is they had their particular mutants that they put in there um pretty much so this x-men election is uh the mutants they have is the japanese mutant armor she has the power like to have like this psionic armor that she can make out of the blue, make it look like whatever else. Avalanche, he's actually an old villain that can create earthquakes, pretty much. Um, Firestar, which is like, she's an old character. She was like in one of the old Spider-Man cartoons back in the day with Iceman and stuff like that or whatever. So they're trying to bring her back out. Um, This Wakandan mutant named Gentle, or whatever but he's pretty much like a hulk with vibe like vibranium tattoos or whatever mm. um That's gorgon funny. yeah gorgon which is my personal favorite because he um he actually was whooping ass in what they call the uh, let's see the ex of swords event where they were in a tournament and uh, this guy that could basically control a bunch of dead warriors or whatever was coming at him and he was just basically fighting all of them at once turning them into stone or whatever pretty much uh and yeah that scene right there just made me want, all right i want to see a samurai dude with this sword whoop ass <laughs> yeah i want him on the x-men and he was a wolverine villain so i think that would be sweet pretty much um the other ones are macromax uh, this other girl named Penance, she's a black superhero that's like extra strong. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. But hmm? the woman that, that you said the name before that was Malcolm X. No, my uh Micromax, Micromax, or whatever. I don't really care about the character. Oh. <laughs> I don't think he's gonna win, so I'm not even gonna bring him up. <laughs> Malcolm X is a mutant now. Oh shit. He is a mutant, it's Magneto. Let me joke. I'm joking. Yeah. I'm joking. <laughs> um, uh, Siren, that's Banshee's daughter. She basically got the same powers as Banshee, where she can scream really loud and break shit. And uh, Japanese, um, is it Japanese? This Japanese uh, mutant named uh, Surge, and she has powers of electricity. The main reason why I brought up Lil Wayne is because they got a mutant named Bling. Bling bling I mean, name, bling. That's her name. Every time her name I'm fucking up your city, bling bling. I was making uh, city turn to gritty, bling bling. She possesses a diamond hard body, superhuman strength, and the ability to shoot fire crystal light projectiles at people. Hold on, C- crystal light, like she gonna fire. But no, crystalline, like they, the way they said, the crystalline. <laughs> projectiles to them. I'm, That's just, what he, dude, I'm just imagining her shooting powder drink packets at people. <laughs> question. Okay. Was she in was she the same one that turned into like had a diamond skin in the Wolverine Origins movie when they broke the kid mutants out? No, that's that's a whole that was Emma Frost. That was uh yeah. who they called the White Queen from the Hellfire Club. That's the white lady. Bling is a black girl. And um, yeah, you can't really tell that she's like black because she her mutant power makes her totally look like a crystallized person 
or whatever. Yeah. If you look. So yeah, that's the reason why Lil Wayne and some ice or some shit. Lil Wayne, you should have trademarked that jump, man. It didn't get to the point where they making mutants. Yeah, you get, like, <laughs> get that Marvel mutant money, buddy. All of that, boy. yeah, basically. You wouldn't have had Super the Superman or nothing. You would have been straight king. Exactly, exactly. Ooh. Uh, but yeah, my bad. My bad. What is it? No, I need them glasses, man. I took them off the first time. Sorry. True. Oh man, boy, hush up with your old ass. Be the same damn age, nigga. Shut up, nigga. We are not, and we can't even eight. say that in number only, but for another eight days. It will in number I'll only eight days. Uh, eight. That eight days coming soon. A week and a day, yo ass gonna be back older than me. Yeah. <laughs> Never forget to the grandma. Speaking, speaking of old, <laughs> segue right into it. So well, my sister gave me tonight, but it haven't been hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> my sister gave me this article. Uh, UK scientists unearthed a 32 foot sea dragon. With a skull that weighs more than a ton. Oh yes, sir. UK scientists have unearthed the remains of a monumental 180 million old. I am not going to pronounce this one. (laughs) It could thaw your soul. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, I C H T H Y O S A U R, known as a sea dragon. My son loved them shit. This son knows a lot about dinosaurs, man. My son is ridiculous. ridiculous. Like he be telling me names. I'll be like, what the hell is that? And he told me the picture. I'll be like, it's this guy. It's this. Oh yeah. He he he's like he's fixated on dinosaurs. He's asked for dinosaurs. This is every year he's been alive and he asked his formal word. So, yeah. That's how that's how I be knowing all the dinosaurs. He teaches me every day. But this one is named this that. I'd be like, oh really. Yeah. Hey, so hey, well, everybody got they they thing they nerd over. I just talked about the freaking Marvel universe for the fifth thousandth time on this podcast. So hey, yeah, we actually just finished reading a book about prehistoric sea uh, creatures of all uh, kinds. So this was one of them. So that's the reason I remember. I remember. Yo, me. sea creatures are scary as fuck, yo. I can't wait about to say. Them things are scary. I don't never. Well, first of all, you can't go to that part of the like deep. Us as humans wouldn't be able to get that far deep into the ocean about the sea animals and sea monsters that we. That I'm talking about or whatever. Like where our bodies would explode from the pressure, pretty much. But we the simple do. fact they can live down there in that pressure. If they could ever come up here, man. But I don't know. It might be a reverse effect. They might need that pressure, and if if. They go into like a less pressurized area. What would that? What would be the result of that? Either oh, their, their, they bodies, like, their bodies would be like blobs. A lot of those fish that live down that that deep, they have them like their bodies are made of like mostly fat and shit. It's like able to be molded by the pressure. Oh, true. Yeah, because uh, I want to say, what is it? Uh, is it the blue whale or something like that? It's, it's some animal that I just finished reading about with my son. Um, but it's like, it was talking about that, like, because it lives so deep, it has, like, the body is, like, blobbish. So, like, if it comes out of the water or comes up higher in the water, it, it loses its shape. So it, stay, it has to kind of stay in that certain depth. And a lot oh, of okay. like that, yeah. Make sure you stay your ass in the doctor's hand. Have you ever seen a blobfish? Yeah, those things are weird but looking. That's how they look out of the water. If you see one at their natural depth, they don't look like that. Like their bodies have a different shape. It, they look like that when they take out the water because of the loss of pressure. So, like, that's an example of like kind mm-hmm. of one of those things. Yeah. The things I learned from my son, six year olds are amazing, y'all. That's, I mean, the shoot, learning from your son, that's cool. That's cool. Whatever. 
Uh, y'all make sure you you bluffing, stay right in the water. We coming out here causing problems. You be a stain under my foot, god dang it. Only shit them, angler, them angler fish. Them angler fish with the light on the front of them, man. You keep oh, no, your ugly ass right down there. I'm good on that. The puffer fish. I'm good on all them shit that can hurt me. I'm good. I don't need no bear. Mm-hmm. Piranha. None of that shit. Shark, no rays. None, none of them evil monster looking fish. You know who I'm cool with? I can rock with a starfish. Fuck starfish that shit. Is the- he ain't never heard about no starfish attack. Yeah, because they probably didn't live to report that shit. I don't even think Patrick I'll attacked take, anybody. Let me be an old ass survivor. If you're going to get me, take me on out. <laughs> yeah, don't let me limping around here all hobbled up. Just go ahead and get me. <laughs> <laughs> You, you win, nigga. Send the cane to your crib. You right. You right. Send you back as an example, nigga. Nah, I don't want to finish the job. Go back and tell oh, your friends. Nigga, take the salt out the sea, season me, and go ahead and <laughs> fuck that. Smoke. None of them. No, don't nigga, I don't, I don't even really eat humans for real, nigga. I don't <laughs> even really eat I don't want to be no leftovers. No, fuck that. That shit hurt. <laughs> I, eat, I eat, nigga, eat seaweed and shit. I just need to teach you a lesson, nigga. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't, don't want to be no vegetarian first meal down there. I'm afraid. <laughs> nigga, I don't nah. even fucking eat human, nigga. <laughs> I don't even you bite me and throw me back up. I don't even... <laughs> Yeah. Oh, y'all niggas, y'all yeah, niggas y'all. catch us and throw us back in this bitch all the goddamn time, won't you? I just caught your ass and I'm throwing you back up there. We, we <laughs> hole in your lip from the hook. You catch me, you put a big ass chunk of my body out. Now I can't live when you let me go. I'm sitting there with half a spleen, no, no right back, never gone. Shit in the bag. No, I'm good. Go ahead, just eat my whole body. Just follow me whole. Let me get caught by something big enough to just oh, you gone. Jonah, my yeah. this Jonah, my shit. I'm, I'm, oh shit. He, he, he be like Pinocchio, nigga. Just follow me whole. Let me get gone. I'm afraid. <laughs> All gone. So yeah, oh, great. Definitely not stepping in nobody else's homes that we don't want to be in. Pretty much. One home that I'm glad they actually stepped in, though, um, and uh, here in uh, Chesapeake, a man was arrested for after finding explosives and child pornography found in the home on Sparrow Road. So I'm kind of glad they stepped in that person's home. That's around the corner from your spot, ain't eh? Yeah, I know. Yeah, I'm right in Chesapeake. <laughs> yep. Are you over there with the pedophile bomber? Yep. According and to the federal investigation people. search, warrant information, 48-year-old uh, Kim Joseph Habit hmm. uh, of Chesapeake was charged with knowingly shipping and transporting and receiving any explosive without having a license or permit and possessing child pornography. Hmm. Why do you, that's such a weird combination. Yes, that is. So yes. like what 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 was your plan with that exactly? Like what what were you doing with that? Because now I'm curious as fuck. Because that don't go together. It doesn't. So you See, this is my thing. You a diddler and you got and you gonna See, blow. This is my thing. Up. We it's, won't it's, know. We can't know if they go together because we in we in, we not in that lifestyle. They true. they actually go together in they world. Yo, they said, yo, they said the dude had booby traps and stuff and took three safes out of the house. They took three safes out of the house from what he could tell, yo. Like this dude had his whole house lit up. (laughs) So he was like a, a doomsday prepper diddler. Like I feel like he was probably how I put it this way. Um, I think maybe the child pornography was just some sick part of him and his whole personality. But he was already in the business 
of selling and trading off explosives. He just happens to be a big motherfucker that's doing that business. He looked crazy as shit, too. And, and, yes. this probably, and this is probably the trip shit. The niggas he sell bombs to go find out by his his um child shit. I'm like, this fucking weirdo. Right. This nigga's weird. We can't do business with this nigga. How dare you? <laughs> but, but this is... But this I've seen this picture. I, I can't really... It's like really blurry. As don't worry. As, uh, don't worry. When, we, when I drop the video... You, but I know you're going to chop the bed. Hold that shit up on him. Yeah, because he looked, this, he looked like he would have child pornography and uh, explosive. Now his that I've seen everything sense about that story. <laughs> his child oh, pornography yeah. ring probably looking at him like, you deal explosives? Oh my God, we can't fuck with you. So... You live in a double life, or in that lifestyle, they got to go together. So you want one of the other motherfuckers. Either both sides gonna turn against you, or they actually go together. I don't know because I ain't in either one of it. Indeed, on that. Indeed, your indeed your next move is a conundrum. There you go. Indeed, on that. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, be vigilant, people. Man, there's weirdos wherever you at, man. Right. You never know, man. It could be right in your city. The Sparrow Road. Ain't right there there in your damn city. You wouldn't even Doing know. Crazy. It. You ain't even know it. You ain't even know it. Um, all right. Next thing on my list. Uh man, y'all seen this this whole fresh and fit podcast trash that's going on where they had um what they done did now. Oh man, they had the rapper Asian dog. Up there, saw that, saw but that, saw that, whatever. And since then, and I feel like I feel like Asia, like Asian doll uh, people, they probably reignited the um, basically this whole campaign or whatever. But I'm glad it was put out or whatever. But they are on video saying basically they don't they don't date black women or whatever. But yeah, yeah. it's it, it's one thing to have a preference, but when you saying it and you sound like you're saying terms that damn near sound like some KKK shit. We we not night riders, the bone quishas and the, the quishas, yo. Like I like a lot of times with stuff like that, I try to ignore it, but man, like and um yeah, I just I'm I'm glad people are starting to say more stuff about it. It's gotten to the point that Joe Budden said something about it. Joe Budden and Royce Cloud and I said something like, we shouldn't have this type of, like, not these guys. They should not be the ones that be saying, hey, this is man behavior. Right. Pretty much. Um, and then there's a simple fact that the dude fresh is black as fuck. <laughs> man. Who the darkest of the dark? They both have some serious issues, dude. But if you if you watch how they move, man, like period, like it's mm-hmm. a lot there that you can tell that like they some hurt dudes that then went through some shit with some women in their life and they just angry at women, period. And specifically black women must have done them pretty dirty at some point. And I also think some of the stuff they saying is just for reaction as well. Indeed. I believe some some of their views. No, it's all speculation. Some of their views are hyper exaggerated, just to get a reaction mm-hmm. out of somebody, or just to support a narrative about who they are and how they how they um feel. You feel like mm-hmm. a lot of people go on go on their platforms and they they views they spew on their platforms they may be totally different than their own personal views that they have off mm-hmm. the platform. You feel me? Like it's a, it's all a character source for some people. Now that may not be them, but I'm just saying it could be. Um, as far as downing a, 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 an entire race of women, uh, once again, no one thing or no no group that's characterized together as a monolith. Each person is different. Now, the common denominator, you have to find a common denominator in every situation. Now, if you've been hurt in multiple situations by the same race of women, who? Cool. But the common denominator ain't the race of the woman. You got to look deeper than that. You're too close to the situation. Look deeper to find the real root of where that hurt comes from, the, the, the same characteristics all those women have. And if there is no common denominator, look in the mirror. 
because sometimes you can inflict some hurt on yourself in a relationship. Your decisions could end up making your feelings be hurt. Your decisions can't lead a woman to do something that hurts you. So it takes self-awareness and that zoom in, zoom out thing we always talk about. And take a step back so you won't be so close to the scene. Be so see that bigger picture. Take another step back to see the biggest picture and be self-aware. You feel me? In these situations, I can't speak on them. I mean, me personally, I've been hurt. I've only dated, like personally dated and been in relationships with Black women, but I've had dealings with other cultures. You could say it like that. Um, so being I've been in relationships with Black women, most of my relationship hurt have come from Black women. I haven't given other races, I haven't afforded them the opportunity to do that. So, of course, my view there would be different. But at the same time, that's not going, how can I say, sway my view on an entire race of any women. My experiences that I had with the few, the rare few I had with them. Because at the end of the day, I didn't date the entire race. So how can I judge a race based on my few experiences? True. Uh, I think, um, what were you about to say, Tiff? No, go ahead, bro. Well, I was, I was going to say that I feel like one part of that is, is it that you don't date Black women or you're they're just not choosing to date you for some reason. <laughs> is that the, like, cause this, this is my thing about them, right? So I, I've been looking at them for like, as far as for a while, cause I've seen people put up their videos and stuff like that. So I look at people just to see what they're about or whatever. And, um, and then after a while, it's just like, all right, you had some points that, all right, that sound valid. But your actions and just the, the shit you do, it, I'm seeing more and more flaw shit after a while. Like, with, with them, like, and the, at the rate that they're doing, they just been out since February of 2020. The way you would think they've, like, blown up, you think they've been there for a while. But they just been out. I looked at it. They've been, only been up for, like, since February of 2020. And then it's just back to back controversy or whatever. It was the Abba and Preach thing, but they like insulted, um, insulted um, that dude's wife. Was it um, Preach's wife or whatever? And he challenged them to a boxing match. And then it's just the simple fact that when people do a rebuttal video against them, they're actually like, um, they're like reporting them to YouTube or whatever, saying it's not fair use. And then YouTube is saying back basically like they can do this pretty much, whatever. That's that scandal. And then we have this popping up or whatever. So I feel like they they do flaw shit and eventually everything comes to light after a while, especially if you just as soon if if you're if your uh, 15 minutes of fame is just like burning that quickly or whatever, it's going to fizzle out just as fast. Right. Pretty Absolutely. much. Big and, I, I, and I feel like that's what they're doing. They're going for the quick troll. They get some type of views so they can build up their subscribers. They're, they're stuck in that or whatever. It went from, it went from talking about a uh, man relationship shit to all right, we're gonna just get a whole bunch of random OnlyFans and stripper bitches and all this other stuff. Excuse me for saying stripper bitches if that's the wrong thing to say. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was, but <laughs> whatever. But whatever the PC term for it, please place right there. I apologize. And <laughs> and um, fuck it. I don't even. I don't care because I don't know what to say. But. but <laughs> but they're going to get a whole bunch of them up there just and it's not like they don't have all women they just got a particular type of woman that they know that they will be able to get some type of a uh, rise from or whatever and let's see who's going to get emotional and which one i can shout at just so i can kick them out for another video 
That's just it's all the speculation. It's like WWE now with that. So uh, I just wanted to say that that um, at the while, and I feel like I did, gave them a um, a certain amount of chances or whatever to like show me that I right, this is not no fuck shit that I'm watching, or whatever. But more and more stuff come out. It's, it just seemed like they're all fuckery with no good, pretty much. But yeah, a lot of it. Nah, but Priest Deep kind of showed me, and I haven't. I hadn't really watched before that shit popped up because of Abner. Like, I watch Abner and Preach, so that's the main reason why I found out about Fresh and Fit, because I ain't know who these niggas were. Yeah, me too. I didn't even know they existed. But then to be as good as they are, I, I, they weren't in my algorithm. But then mm-hmm. I started looking at it, I was like, oh, yeah, there's some wild shit here. Um, I will say, though, that Abner and Preach did make a really good point. They were like, um, a lot of the subset of women that they deal with is a very specific type of woman. It is the only... Yep. Miami, I'm involved in the fast paced party lifestyle. That's my that's my general thing. And when you're dealing with women like that, like you're going to get a very specific type of behavior from all of them, but specifically from the black women of that ilk, because they are again modeling after a certain type. You're gonna get more of the city girls type if you're looking at the 20 to 25 year old young woman in Miami that is an IG model or OnlyFans girl. When you're dealing in that world, that's what you're going to get because that's their general thing. You know what I mean? Like, if you want something different, then start hanging with different types of women and actually talking to them. But that's not what you want because, for one, you ain't going to get no ratings from being able to kick them women out because them women ain't going to do nothing that make you look like you valid for kicking them out. But two, them women are probably not going to come on your show but three, if they do come on your show, you're probably going to end up losing a lot of your fan base because everything they do on their channel that is not over sensationalized, them kicking somebody out or some real like shock value type shit, it's not getting views. Like their shit, when they do shit about finance or something, don't nobody watch that shit. Uh-uh. But as soon as they nope. Do that Frank Castle shit or something. So I think a lot of what you said as far as them doing it for views is is there. And I also think that there's something to say about like when dudes say they don't like any specific race of woman, I always wonder like, what's the subset of women you actually dealing with? Are you dealing with a broad range of that race? Or are you like in a specific place picking up women of a specific type and then overgeneralizing? Like, I think there are generalizations in the world that can be made about different groups of people, but to overgeneralize without the actual population set to back it up. It just make you look crazy, man. And that's what they end up looking most like, crazy as fuck. So this don't surprise me that they are looking like they are uh, pretty much self-racist because everything they've done up until now shows us they fuck with. And, and like, another thing. Be real about what it is, man. <coughs> it's ball, and but- another thing. Stop using Frank Castle. I like to punish him. Man, I'm gonna tell you, man. This, these do these are the dudes. All the wrong people we punish been, oh, look at them cornballs right there when we was back in college. Like, and and I ain't saying like we super cool, but like when they're the type of dudes that don't know how to be themselves. And you know we hang with all types. But like when you don't know how to be yourself, like that shit. What the fuck you talking about? We super cool as a motherfucker. I'm just saying, like, you know what I mean, like. But I consider, I guess I'm looking at, like, society's version of cool. Like, we ain't walking around trying to do no cool shit. We just contending who we are, and we cool with that. And I think that's what makes them lame, is that's that they're stuck trying to be cool as opposed to just being themselves. And I think if they were themselves, they're afraid that people wouldn't fuck with them. People wouldn't even watch that shit, because maybe they don't have their personality naturally to have anybody give a fuck. And I think that's what a lot of it is in that, especially on their show, but in that general type of like that <clears throat> over misogynistic, everybody, fuck everybody. They, you know, the women, I, I think a lot of that shit come from like dudes that was like, they not comfortable being themselves around women and they've been rejected. And instead of them putting it on, okay, maybe it was because I was so awkward with being myself or maybe it was because of this, they put it on the woman and said something wrong with the women. And then you lead to these niggas. So I, I, I yeah. 
It's a layered shit down. Mm -hmm. It all boiled down to them being fuckboys. Mm-hmm. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Fuckboys. Uh the city boys are not up on this one. And uh I, I said I'm gonna <laughs> so I'm gonna say uh I was gonna end the good and fuckery off on some transition to some city boy shit with my boy Drake. <clears throat> Here we go. This is hilarious. An uh, Instagram model is ready to sue after Drake allegedly put hot sauce in a condom. There you go, Drake. Protect um, <clears throat> Let's Protect let me yourself. get let let me explain more and delve into the story a little bit more. <laughs> so, uh, according to Too Much Hot Tea on Instagram. <laughs> Uh, allegedly, Drake and his IG model allegedly met up on Instagram. I can believe that because it's been proof of him popping up in some people's DMs. Matter of fact, he just told somebody to stop smoking online. So he was, and that dude was like, "Man, fuck you." <laughs> Ain't nothing. That's some shit. <laughs> That's some shit. But um, the model and Drake had a romantic encounter, and what happened next was was well crazy. After the party, they went back to the hotel to smoke. Uh, had relations and whatnot, and she said it was uh, very intent on ensuring things were consensual. Uh, they, they they they're going a little bit too much into what what happened or whatever because I really don't care what they did during sex. But he said afterwards he went to the bathroom and uh, came and came out with the. Uh, no, I'm, let me skip over that. I'm going over that, but all right. He said he went to the bathroom <laughs> and when he finished, he tied it up and put hot sauce in the condom or whatever. She, she got the condom and put it in the vagina because she was trying to get, you know, the sperm and then, you know, make her, make Drake the baby mm -hmm. daddy. And mm -hmm. she said, it felt like pouring hot lava in a, in a coke milk. She screamed, but she's trying to do. But she's trying to do. This this boy Drake, <laughs> this drug boy Drake is real tactical, man. Like Kanye was not <laughs> playing when he said. So she put a hot sauce on her. Drake is <laughs> yeah, she tried to get she 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 went dig for the condom so she can <laughs> try to get herself can be the next big, big and, then, and, and then and doing that <laughs> she put hot sauce on her taco baby let me, let me ask the audience, <laughs> man uh i don't mean to get nasty so i'm gonna try to use terms that don't go to fall on the disgusting scale no what color no filters. Is so lactic? What like what color is this rubber? That That's what I you don't see this orange ass shit in there, like because hot sauce got that distinct ass color. Like I don't care what it touch, once it touch it, that shit is orange. I don't care what it is, like your fingers, the food, whatever is orange. So I'm like, how did you not see this orange shit in there? You thought that was normal? Even if it's like on hot sauce, you saw the orange shit and was like, I'm gonna do that with that. Maybe it was a black you know, condom. About your your private areas or not? Like be like, I, I love myself. Let me not just throw anything in there. Could have been a black condom, you never know. That is all she knew. Crazy yo. All she, all she knew was this is my chance. <laughs> this is my chance of a lifetime. Mm -hmm. Your chance of a lifetime, my to burn, sterilize you yourself. He set your ass up for success and you achieved it. Yo, A plus performance, man. <laughs> A plus performance. A plus, A plus, plus for Drake, man. A color Tabasco. My God. <laughs> Drake hit that shit. I'm into the stage. Texas Pete. How hot is Patricia? Damn, yo. 
How much you want to wear shoes? That's going to be his next track. How much you want to wear His next track going to be called Hot Sauce. I'll win you now. You know, oh, well, now um, you got uh, too much sauce. Hey, y'all got a whole yeah. thing, so. too, much. <laughs> too much sauce. Hey, man, man, man. got too much sauce. Hey, <laughs> I'm burning up. I got some fire in my coochie. I'm burning up. <laughs> Baby, you should hurry up. Bring some milk in her. <laughs> Bang her in a hotel and she really got that ass. So she tried to get my kids and now she smelled like Tabasco. Boy, you tried to put them <laughs> syllables in there, didn't you, boy? Them syllables were stumbling yeah. out. I just yeah, imagine yeah. the words just like running past, like running through like a doorway that's too tight and like a stamp. That's just like those words were coming out like people was running into the Astro World concert. <laughs> get out of the way. Ah. I'm going to get out here. You're going to fit this syllable in there. What y'all say? Astro and I belong here. Make room. My bottom lip big sometimes when I. Uh... <laughs> Be flapping with nothing. Hey, what a word! Really invisible, and we can't see them, but that's really how they come out. They be jumping off of them, and sometimes they trip up, and that's what makes you like fumble over words, like them bitches be in there. Boing, boing, blah, blah, oh god! And like, god damn it, yeah, Cal, you fucked us up again, song. got us embarrassed out here. Every time, <laughs> I wish you would just stop saying him. It's the best. The bass. The bass. I'm joking. I'm joking. Found it out. Oh, man. Oh, man. But yeah, that was the end of the fuckery. Uh, Tabasco cheeks. Um, <laughs> trying to bask in that Tabasco glory. Tabasco look. Good fuckery. Oh, For the moral of the day, kid, don't put hot sauce in your pussy. Put hot sauce on my burrito, baby. <laughs> Pause. No, you look good to me. Hot sauce on my burrito, baby. No, you look good to me. Rest in peace to the Willow Spoon. That remind me, that remind me of that scene, uh, Nutty Professor, where he had the mariachi band. Stop it, my beef in your taco. <laughs> <laughs> beef in your taco right now. You know my <laughs> and that. You know what my favorite line of any Nutty Professor movie is? And it's so, it's not even like the punchline or anything. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. No, it's mine. I love that so much, but it just makes me happy to see that nigga going. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. It's a part of that movie that's not even funny. I mean, it's funny, but it's not really that funny. Or whatever, but I just get weak every single time. But when the um with the uncle, when they like arguing in the um in the restaurant, and he just uh yells back, "Can I get a toothpick? A toothpick?" <laughs> that no, he low key is the, the funniest characters in there, but he only got the simple part. <laughs> but it's hilarious, yo! Like every single time, man. I get weak every time I see him do it because I can just see somebody ignorant in the restaurant doing that shit anyway. And that's everybody's uncle sitting up there <clears throat> arguing with the kids. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. Fat would go call the kids fat. They're over there just eating all the ice cream out of the... <laughs> eating all the goober. All y'all fluffy but grandma. All y'all. Look at you, so fat. You're sweating yogurt. Like that. <laughs> oh, thick sweat. Skin be all sticky and shit. Oh, that, that's disgusting. I ain't a fan of them feeling the regular sweat on me. But oh, that, just, that just put a horrible mental mental display. Oh, oh. oh can't well, be worse than that mental display that Basil talked about earlier. <laughs> Uh, 
yeah. Yeah. Man. yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's the end of the good and fuckery, man. Some nasty shit. All right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, and that brings us also to the end of another week, another episode of the Partners, episode sixty in the books, bitchy. Zero ten times six. Yeah, these are two businesses we want to have. My people, that business. Uh Um, only one I can think of, man. Well, two. Put them on to it, face. Artreclothing.com. Once again, it's artreclothing.com. Come, what's that? Artreclothing.com. A-I-T-R-E clothing.com. Check us out, man. New apparel comes up once, twice, maybe three times a week. At least four times a month. It so goes up. Um, come to the springtime. I know we're still cold out there, but we're coming into the spring. Um, short sleeves out, long sleeves out, hoodies, um, sweatshirts, kids' articles, beach towels, phone cases, face masks, because we're still in this COVID thing, man. You need your face mask. Blue Monkey. Get Blue up. Monkey is getting stronger by the day. Yes. Mm-hmm. Blue Monkey, baby. Get that Delta Blue Cron, Monkey. Delta Crime, Get it. Ultron. Um, hats and Hopefully one day soon we're getting some sneakers. I'm still in the design, still checking stuff out about the sneakers, but I got some prototypes. I like what I'm looking at, so I'm just trying to get some tweaks in there. But like I said, once again, artreclothing.com, um, promo code pod squad 83 Save some money, man. Check us out. Oh, caps. Believe that. And after you've done, you know, spending your money at rtreclothing.com, getting all your Artre AC83 merchandise and your partner's apparel, please come on, you know, and just support the podcast itself. If you want to do that financially, you can go to Cash App at dollar sign partner tiers one. You can also go to buymeacoffee.com and donate for as little as a dollar. You can also sign up for a membership there, which gives you exclusive perks and access to behind the scene content and access to us. And also... You can also um, support and become a monthly supporter on anchor.fm backslash the hyphen partners. Um, yeah, Anchor. man. Anchor.fm. Indeed, man. Indeed. If you are a listener of the podcast and you prefer the audio, um, if you do get a chance to listen, man, make sure after you listen on YouTube, if you're a YouTube person, go back and listen to it on Anchor. If you're just a podcast app person, go ahead and get that app. Um, it helps us out tremendously because we get add revenue from there. Uh, we're actually monetized there, so it definitely helps us out tremendously. And um, yeah, man, that's the financial ways you can help the pod. And as always, if you want to help and you don't have no money or you don't want to spend your money, but you still want to look out and support your bros, like, comment, share, subscribe, leave us a voice message if you're on Anchor. Like, interact with the content in more than one way that helps us with the algorithm, but also helps us to actually have the conversation with y'all, which is important to us. It continues the conversation, allows us to grow and just gets more information and knowledge out there because we don't know everything. So sometimes a lot, a lot of times I end up going back and researching something that somebody in the comments will say, and it like teaches me something new or expands my mentality on stuff. So like interact with the content, it's free. If you ain't got the bread or you don't want to spend your bread, that's a good way to support us. And if you just want to get in touch with us, how can they do that, Pat? At T-H-E-P-O-D-N-A-S. One more time. Flick it, flick it. Uh, at T-H-E-P-O-D-N-A-S. That is the TikTok, the Instagram, the Twitter. Uh, we get the Facebook. On Facebook with Tiz Face Pat are the partners, pretty much. And uh, yeah, hit us up there. We also on um, we also on Twitch, right? I'm on Twitch, I did say TikTok. Yeah, I said that. So at T E T P O D N E S. We everywhere, man. Everywhere, Check man. Out, man. Check us out, man. Check us out, man. Check us out. And if you do get a pair from MartreClothing.com, make sure you send us a picture to the email or to one of our social media pages so we can post you up there, man. That part, please make sure you do that. And um. Yeah, man. Thank y'all for listening again another week. Episode 60 in the books. More coming again this week. Um, for, for those of y'all who tuned into our uh, New Year's Live, 
the sports show I was talking about may come earlier than expected. Um, I was just talking to another guy who has some different equipment that may help, and he's good with, like, the stats and stuff. So I'm molding it. I'm, I'm developing it, but be on the lookout for that. And, yeah, man, just keep on looking out for more and more content, more and more apparel, more and more merch, more and more everything from the partners. God like coming this year, big baby. So every market you can think of, man, we, we trying to attack all areas from social media to actual podcast media to YouTube content to comic books to the fashion world. Like, we trying to do it all. And it's people like you that are listening right now that help us to do it. So keep fucking with us because we fuck with y'all, man. And as always, I have been your boy, Tiz, one third of the partners. And I've been with. The other third of the partners here, the Padawan that is spelled P-A-T-T-A-W-O-N, not the way from Star Wars, but that way. So I don't get copyright infringement, but it is the Padawan here. And I'm along with dramatic pause. What's that, man? It's the boy facing the place signing off. Thank you for coming. You could have been anywhere, but you're here with us. See you next time. Big facts, man. We love y'all. We see y'all next week. We see y'all here in these streets. <laughs>